the new single Couple Goals is a way on touching on basically your past with yeah. Polly D. And I, I want you to kind of unpack that because that's not my story. But like yeah. what tell tell me a little bit Thank about God. it. No, I <laughs> Thank God. You don't want yeah. that story, honey. Don't want that, that story. That was okay. like that was three days of my PTS shrooming experience. <laughs> three days it took to deal with that with all the trauma inside my body. So um, go ahead. So, yeah, the song I I I actually wrote it at the time. Now that I've gone to Bali, got off of everything big pharma has thrown down my throat since I was 17 in order to be my most aspirational self in everything that I do. Um, I started to eat raw. I was doing Reiki healing, Theta healing, Wim Hof, ice baths. I was doing breath work. I mean, I was literally doing everything to get off medications, to heal my body. And then once I kind of like was able to see clearly without medicine, I started to do uh, psychedelics, PTSD shrooming. I did for two weeks, a very intense, I lived on a compound. It was like a polyamorous compound. Mm -hmm. So everybody was in open marriages, which is very common in other places in the world. We're a very judgmental country. Like I noticed the judgment that was inside of me instantly, like for days, my first couple months in Bali, just things were standing out to me that were just not okay. But they were like, hey, in France, a lot of people are in open marriages. This is not a big deal at all. All my friends are. To you, it's like outrageous that I'm letting someone else fuck my husband. But to me, it's not the same thing. Yeah. So, so anyway, I, I went through a lot of healing. And after that, I felt able, like, uh, able to put this song on a track and record it and release it because I, I, I'm careful about talking about things that are traumatic right after they happen, because a lot of times you don't have a wide enough perspective to say things accurately. Okay. I think until you've he, I don't ever want to, words are so important for me because nowadays with the internet, once it's said, it's said, and 20 years from now, you'll still be held to it because the internet keeps everything alive. It's true. It never dies. Yeah. So you got to be even more careful nowadays with cancel culture, even though I absolutely do not believe in cancel culture. I believe in communication culture all the way. Nothing changes when no one talks, period. Yep, same. Mm-hmm. But, but, um, but yeah, so like I was able to do this song after being able to have a wider perspective. So it's not really like a, it is a Taylor Swift honest moment about an ex. I Taylor Swift it for sure. Okay. But <laughs> I, I, I. In my most like uh, compassionate, graceful place, I hope that everybody could potentially be better in their next relationship than they were prior. And I hope that the same behavior that I experienced is not occurring still. Um, but I, I did him a favor by barely addressing one issue because I could write an album. So this is more, this is actually therapeutic for you then, the song. All music is all well, music. I, I listen to music to feel. What's what would you say something surprising that I don't know that people people would know about your relationship with Polly D? Well, like what what would people be surprised about? <laughs> um, well, here's the thing. I I don't know. At, like at the time when they everyone thinks we broke up at marriage boot camp that was the last they saw of us but Mm -hmm. got back together I was with him all the way up until he left for Jersey Shore with the you're my wife's I love you I'll call you on your birthday when I'll get my my phone back from the producers he was in Miami saying bye to me as he handed them his phone Mm -hmm. and then I learned that we were over after two and a half years three almost maybe Um, when Lauren called me on my birthday and she didn't know we were back together and she was telling me she had called uh, whatever her boyfriend's name is on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she's married to him now. Um, both of them have said shady shit about me in the press, so they can both kiss my ass, by the way. But um, she called me on my birthday and then told me, oh, yes, uh, Ronnie just cheated on his pregnant wife and everybody, sh- they're about to have her come to the house and it's going to be so fucked up and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like listening to the trash. And then she said, um, and Polly fingered two waitresses at the club last night. And that's how I learned that, I guess I'm not the wife that he's calling on my birthday. I found that out. Man. Oh. And I probably sent a few texts. I think he got his fame back and he was turned straight back into 
maybe what he always was, but he wasn't as popping when I was with him. And so right. he was maybe feeling like settling, even though settling wasn't what he was doing because he was cheating on me every weekend. So he basically used your platform to bounce back. That's what it was. I don't know if he used my platform because I I think we we were both on the same show. So yeah. You know, gotcha. he's probably always had a bigger platform than me being a part of a show where they just fuck people and make up stupid words for women like grenade. And then I'm a double platinum selling artist and I don't mean shit, but yeah, basically. Yeah.